All right, hello and welcome back to another episode of Just a Girl from Cleveland. This is episode 152. We are officially into football season now, full swing. We have the first preseason game under our belts. Um, things are things are happening. It is August and we're, we're moving right towards the regular season. I feel like the preseason is never as exciting as I want it to be. Like I get so pumped about the fact that I'm going to have a football game on my television that you know when the game actually starts I quickly remember the fact that like 80% of the people who are taking snaps for the majority of the game uh, are probably not going to see a snap during the actual you know regular season and um, you know it's it's not, the games aren't very exciting but it is cool to you know occasionally see a guy that really shines in preseason ends up making the initial 53 might have some level of an impact on a team you know that definitely does happen so um it is cool when you you have those chances to see guys in those positions shine but in general it was um it was a football game and that's that's pretty much all there is to say about it i do have some some thoughts and takeaways that i want to go over today um, and I'm also going to have this episode be my division ranking prediction, Super Bowl prediction, uh, NFL award prediction for the upcoming season. I know I do that episode every year, so decided why not to do it this week as we are ramping up here, um, to the regular season. Um, okay, so before we get into the preseason game, I did want to quickly touch on um, one move that the Browns just made uh, early this week. They traded for Nick Harris, um, and look, this was a um, this is obviously a player that has previously been on the Browns roster. Uh, the Browns gave the Seahawks a 2026 uh, sixth round pick in addition to Harris, and then they received back a 2026 seventh round pick. So you know, basically a pick swap, uh, with the, with the player included there. So I look, I think this was a smart move for the Browns to make. Um, obviously in the preseason game, Luke Whipler got injured, going to be out for a significant amount of time, if not the majority of the season. So, uh, not going to be an option for the team at center. Uh, and this team is literally cursed at the center position the last couple of years. I think it was two years ago, preseason it might I don't think it was last year I think it was two years ago I can't quite remember but it was um Nick Harris and Dawson Deaton within like 72 hours of each other they were injured and it was just like oh okay we like half of the centers that we have on the roster are gone immediately so I think we're a little bit cursed at the position and uh going to have to tread lightly over the next two preseason games to make sure no one else uh gets hurt knock on wood um, but I feel like this was a smart move to make just given that Nick Harris is already comfortable with the Browns organization. He's familiar with the people in the building, how they do things. Um, when you're making a change this close to the actual season, I think it does definitely benefit you to have someone who is familiar with your program, um, and how you do things. So, you know, you're not really not giving anything up to do it. I think it made a ton of sense. Uh, they did list him on the website as full ba fullback slash center because we have previously used him in a fullback capacity as well. So uh, I love that that was included there and hoping we see some Nick Harris fullback snaps because uh, who doesn't love just a, a little fullback moment in a game? Uh, okay, so getting into the actual preseason game now, some of my Takeaways and thoughts. Like I said, you can't take too much away from it. They keep things pretty vanilla in general. Like if you're looking for big takeaways um, with Ken Dorsey being added to the offense and the new offensive structure, you're just not going to find that in the preseason. Uh, but I think you can take some some moments here or there uh, and look at them as positive building blocks moving forward. So that's kind of what I did. Um you know, offensively, a couple different standouts. Uh, Jamari Thrash, the fifth rounder that they took in this past draft, had a nice showing, three uh, receptions for 43 yards. There was the nice 22-yard reception up the middle uh, that was really enjoyable and, you know, was good to see him have a, a couple of different decent moments. I think if he can stack the next two preseason games with a similar performance, he might be able to make that initial 53 and um, have an impact. The wide receiver room is is pretty crowded at this point in time, though, so it's going to be tough to make. But I think uh, the fact that he, you know, showed up the way he did, um, you know, he might might have a shot. 
Um, Jordan Akins was another one that stood out to me. I think, you know, the tight end room has been interesting because obviously you have a pro bowler in David Njoku, which most teams don't have pro bowl tight end talent. So I feel lucky that we have that and don't expect much beyond that. Um, you know, over the years, we've had a couple different other what are supposed to be more star type players in that role when we used to have Austin Hooper, who didn't really uh, show up and show out. Uh, Harrison Bryant, who is no longer with the team, but was for what, four, four years probably in total. So, um, you know, he had been around for a while. So there really with him being gone, there's a lot that opens up um, within that room now. And I think Jordan Akins um, is a perfect person for that role. I don't think you need another star tight end. I think we should probably move away from that mindset as an offense in general, where fans felt like we were this like tight end heavy offense and that's how Kevin liked to run things. I think they're open to um, just other personnel packages and wanting to use more of those based on the talent that they have. So, um, you know, I don't think you need all of these tight ends, all of these talented tight ends. I think it's okay to have David Njoku be the main guy. I think Jordan Akins can definitely um, contribute as well. So felt good about seeing that from him. Um, DTR, I think, was my biggest takeaway overall. I think, um, you know, he looked really comfortable, a little bit calmer than I think he looked last year and just more sure of himself in general, which like, look, he was a rookie last year. Of course, you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable at times. He was put in some really tough situations in the Ravens game when no one knew that Deshaun Watson wasn't going to be able to play, play, including DTR himself did not know that he was, he was going to have to step in that day. Um, you know, the Steelers game when he played and, and willed that team to victory last season. And then obviously he had his injury, but he went through some really tough moments that I think probably created a more resilient football player. And uh, I think that's really exciting to see that kind of compound into the preseason this year where it felt like he was really calm and controlled with what he was doing. It's just the preseason. I know he, he played well in the preseason last year, so I'm not reading into it too much, but I just uh, felt good to see that. I think, um, you know, the, the roster currently has four quarterbacks on it. You've got obviously Deshaun and Jameis, and then I think competing for that third spot. Um, DTR has, is obviously competing against Tyler Huntley, Huntley, but I feel like he has really proven, um, you know, that he is a capable backup and just him being on that rookie deal. I think the team will see the value in keeping him around over Tyler Huntley. Uh, and I think he'll be that third, third quarterback on the roster. My big hope and a massive prediction for, um, the next coming weeks is that Andrew Barry is able to facilitate a similar trade to what they did last season with Josh Dobbs, uh, where it was like a team gets desperate. They, you know, want to make a move. They'll, they'll toss you a fifth or a sixth rounder for, um, you know, a, a quarterback that you just happen to have on your roster. I think that's probably part of the reason they have so many because they know quarterbacks are valuable. Injuries happen. Some team could get desperate and they're going to come calling and the Browns want to have the assets on hand because, you know, even though there are these low round picks, fifth rounders, sixth rounders, seventh rounders, those all add up to be able to allow you to make certain trades and, you know, putting these different picks together just gives you more flexibility for the future. And it's something that this front office loves to do. So I can absolutely see that happening over the coming weeks. So keep your eyes peeled. That's my, that's my big prediction. Um, that really, I feel like was everything from the preseason game that I feel like really stood out, you know, no, no major takeaways, but those couple guys shined. And that was, I think that was good to see. We don't focus on the result of preseason games because the year that the Browns were 0-16, they won all of their preseason games. I always try to remind people of that. Do not get focused on any results of the preseason. Okay, so let's get into the division ranking predictions. Always very exciting. Um, you know, I don't really have, I don't think anything insanely controversial, definitely picking a lot of favorites when it comes to the division predictions, but I'll give some other commentary, I guess, of how I feel about those divisions as we're going through each of them on just maybe different things that I think, um, could happen there. So 
let's start with the AFC um, and then we'll we'll go through all those divisions and then go into the NFC. So starting with the AFC West, this is my probably easiest pick to make. And that is the Kansas City Chiefs winning the AFC West. Shocking. I know no one expected that. The reigning Super Bowl champs would come back and win their division again, but I'm going to be bold and brave and uh, make such a tough choice on this podcast to pick the Kansas City Chiefs. Look, I said it last year. I've said it multiple years, I, I think, on this podcast. I can't pick against them. It is really hard to pick against a team that regardless of what is thrown their way in terms of injuries, in terms of just the the sheer talent that they have on their team in terms of pass catchers when you think gosh they have nothing in that room um doesn't matter because they have Patrick Mahomes who manages to get it done no matter what so I will not be picking against the Kansas City Chiefs anytime soon um just I mean look everyone looked at that roster last year and thought there's no way that they can do this and they won the Super Bowl so there's no reason for me to pick against them again I have the Chiefs sitting there at number one, followed by Chargers, Raiders, Broncos. I really, the Broncos, I feel like are in full implosion um, just with their the, the current state. The handling of the Russell Wilson situation and their quarterback position in general has been kind of embarrassing, um, and I am not expecting big things from them um, this season. I have the Chargers at two, um, you know, I, I think Harbaugh is going to come in and do a good job. I don't think it's going to happen as quickly as people might anticipate it to happen. But in general, there's actually not a ton of really strong talent in this division. I feel like a couple years ago, it was like the AFC West is a gauntlet. Like it is going to be impossible to go through them. And, you know, now it's just like, I don't know. I feel like it's the Chiefs and then everyone else. Uh, obviously, the Chargers still have a lot of talent with at the quarterback position with Justin Herbert, but they really struggled last season, and it's um, tough to say if they're going to be able to turn it around this year. So that is how I'm feeling about the AFC West. AFC North, I have, once again, the Baltimore Ravens winning the division. I'm so sorry that I can't pick the Browns, but I just can't do it, um, really just because of the uncertainty at the quarterback position. It's not that I don't think the Browns are capable of it. I think they have a really talented roster, and if things go right and Deshaun Watson at least somewhat closely returns to an older version of himself, it's I'm not even asking for the full Texans version of him, but just he's got to be better than what we have seen from him. This team does have the capability of winning the division. It's just really hard for me to assume that that's going to happen. So I have to go with um, the team that has consistently shown up year after year, has last year's MVP in Lamar Jackson. Um, I'm going with the Ravens at one. Then I have the Browns at two. I have the Bengals at three and the Steelers sitting there at number four. Look, I think this is, if not the most, one of the most competitive divisions in the league. So I think it could really go any direction. All of these teams could be over 500 and competing for the playoffs. Um, so it's one that's really hard to pick the order because, you know, those division games are going to matter so much and uh, every injuries are going to matter so much. I mean, whoever stays the healthiest probably has a better chance of winning the division as well. So it's it's gonna be a gauntlet. And um, we know that it's been that way for the last couple years. And uh, it's fun in some ways and also really annoying in others when you see some of the um, teams that, you know, the Bills get to play the Patriots twice a year. Like I'm jealous of that right now. Um, we, we don't have a team, a team like that where you're like, oh, we're so lucky to be able to play this team two times. No, no team is like that in the AFC North. Um, okay, so AFC East, um, I have, not shocking, again, the Buffalo Bills winning the division. Um, you know, this one I feel like could be closer in many people's eyes with Aaron Rodgers returning for the Jets. Um, you have the Dolphins who last year by all accounts were leading that division for the majority of the season up until the very end when the Bills were able to, um, you know, turn things around. And then obviously the Dolphins had to play in that 
insanely cold game on the road in Kansas City and just did not stand a chance. Uh, so, you know, the Dolphins are one of those teams that I feel like they blow out a lot of teams, but then they also really struggle against the really good matchups. So um, my order for this division is Bills, Jets, Dolphins, Patriots. I really struggled and have gone back and forth over the last many weeks on Jets and Dolphins at two and three and how I, I feel about those two teams. Um, I'm giving the Jets a little bit of an edge because of their defense, but you know they could be in a, a weird position if Aaron Rodgers does not seem to be the quarterback that he used to be coming back from this major injury. So we'll be interested to see there. And then it was pretty easy for me to put the Patriots last um, just based on all of the other teams in that division. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then the last AFC division, we have the AFC South. We have um, the Texans I have taking that division. If you would have told me that last season, I don't even remember who I picked winning that division last season. I'm assuming it was probably the Jags. Um, so I think I'd be shocked to see the state of this division currently because it is quite jumbled up from, I think, what people have been expecting Um last year and the year before that it's just uh there's been a lot of movement here so i i have the texans winning um look i think everyone is on the texans train right now so i am a little bit weary of just how much hype is going in their direction i think you know they they could be a team where cj stroud sees a little bit of a sophomore slump um he could also come back and be you know an mvp candidate like i, I truly think he he does have that capability with how he played last year. I just get weary of any team with just one really good season and a lot of hype around it, just assuming that they're going to be the same thing. I think um, got to be careful of that for sure. Um, following the Texans, I have the Colts, then the Jags, and then the Titans. Um, I think a lot of people have the Jags higher. Some people have the Jags winning the division. I just watched that implosion of the Jags last season and how they completely fell um, towards the end of the year. I don't think their front office has done a, a great job of filling out talent. Uh, I think they've made some strange choices. So I really um, don't have a ton of confidence in them. And I, I have to put the Colts ahead of them. I think Anthony Richardson um, has a lot of talent and could be, um, if he's able to stay healthy, a really good quarterback in this league. So I'm having the Colts ahead of them. Um, and then the Titans there in last, you know, they've got a new coach. They have not had a, you know, star quarterback on their roster in quite some time. So overall, I just, I think it's, it's, pr I feel pretty comfortable in putting them last. Uh, okay. Now we're getting into the NFC. So starting with the NFC North, I have, um, you know, this, this division I think could end up being pretty competitive with the Lions, the Packers, the Bears, and the Vikings. Um, I have the Packers actually taking this division, which I think is probably um, not the popular pick. I think the Lions probably are the popular pick. And I actually, I'm probably gonna shock some people with um, when we get into predictions for playoffs and um, Super Bowl with how I feel about who's gonna make it there. But um, just in terms of, I think the regular season, I just feel like the um, the Packers are such a, prepared organization and I really liked what we saw from Jordan Love last season. I think Matt LaFleur is a really great coach uh, and just I believe in them as an organization um, and I think you know the Lions are an extremely talented team who I think can make it very very far in the postseason. I think both of these are playoff teams. I just think uh, for regular season play I'm going with the, the Green Bay Packers to be the team that, that takes the cake in the division. Um, following that, I have the Bears and then the Vikings. I think the Bears will be a fun one to watch just with Caleb Williams and what they're going to be able to do there. Um, Vikings, I just, I mean, Sam Darnold, JJ McCarthy, what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, not putting them any higher than four there. <laughs> Uh, okay, NFC West, I have the 49ers taking the cake here over the Rams, then the Seahawks and the Cardinals. I think the Rams um, were a surprise team last year that, you know, was way more talented than people expected. But I think still with the way the 49ers have 
kept a lot of their talent around. Obviously, the Brandon Ayuk stuff is still up in the air of what's going to happen there. Um, but in general, that is on both sides of the ball probably one of the most talented rosters in the league, if not the most talented. So pretty easy choice for me there to put them at number one. NFC East, I have the Eagles over the Cowboys here. I think those are the two that people are going to be debating back and forth constantly. Um, you know, I don't have a ton of confidence in either of those teams. I think the Eagles are a team I'm actually a little bit concerned about just because of the second half of last season and the progression of how they really struggled. They have lost a couple of really great players to retirement. Um, so I think that'll be something to keep an eye on, just like players like Jason Kelsey, who were such a part of their identity as a team. I think it does matter when you lose guys like that. So I am um, just interested to watch that team, but I do have them over the Cowboys um, then the Commanders, and last, the Giants. The Giants with a now bearded Daniel Jones recently debuted his, um, he's keeping a beard now. It's it's giving him more of a quarterback vibe, I would say. With the baby face, it was just like, I don't trust this guy to be the quarterback of a football team. Now it's like, okay, maybe I could see you running an offense with the beard. We'll, we'll see if that has any effect on things. Uh, and then lastly, the NFC South, uh, one of the least fun divisions, in my opinion, to discuss. I have the Buccaneers winning over then the Falcons, the Saints, and last, the Panthers. Poor Panthers. I'm sorry to Panthers fans. It is, you're in um, just NFL purgatory right now of, of struggling of who you are as a team. So I, I feel for you. I've been there as a Browns fan. Um, but it was, for me, a pretty easy pick to pick the Buccaneers as the first team. Um, I don't really believe in the whole Kirk Cousins Atlanta thing. I think he is at his age coming off of an Achilles injury. I'm really concerned for his health and what he's going to look like. So um, I, it was, like I said, honestly, an easy, an easy pick for me to put the Buccaneers ahead of them. Might not be for others. I think plenty of people picked the Falcons there, but I, I don't feel that way. Okay, award predictions. Um... MVP, let's start with that. So, you know, these awards always end up being extremely narrative based. Like every year, I think Patrick Mahomes is probably the MVP. Are they going to give it to him every year? Absolutely not. Um, so I tried to pick players that I think would fit the narratives as well as I think their play on the field is probably going to back it up. So for MVP, I have Josh Allen. Um, you know, we've had Lamar win. We've had Patrick win. I think he has the capability of with his play on the field to be able to have an MVP type season. And I think the narrative really works for him as well. Um, if the Bills are able to put together a decent regular season with not too many blemishes, um, I feel like that has held them back uh, or held Josh back in recent years with some some big blemishes on the season. So um, if, if they're able to avoid more of those, I think he has a real shot at MVP. Offensive player of the year, I have Tyreek Hill. Um, last year was Christian McCaffrey. Um, and I feel like, you know, Tyreek Hill was actually just voted um, for the NFL Top 100 as the number one player, which I did not agree with. I thought it should definitely be Patrick over him. I think Patrick was at four, which was a little bit crazy, but um, the players voted on it and they had Tyreek at number one. I think out of every receiver in the league, he has the most potential uh, to get this award. And even though the Dolphins, I think, are not a team I like strongly believe in, I think they put up numbers and um, Tyreek is a huge part of that. So for him, it's just going to be staying healthy. I know he's dealt with some injuries, um, especially last year. So health will be the big factor of if he can win that there. Defensive player of the year, I have Micah Parsons. Uh, no shock, I'm not picking TJ Watt. Um, I'm not picking Miles again because I don't think they're going to give back-to-back -back awards um, for this award. I think Micah, if it wasn't Miles last season, I think it should have been Micah. I think he will have the numbers to back it up. I think he's on a talented defense um, and he hasn't won the award. So that is a huge part of it as well. Coach of the year, I am taking Matt LaFleur. Of the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I talked a little bit about the Green Bay Packers in my breakdown of that division on just what how I believe in them as an organization 
And I think, you know, a lot of people didn't give Matt LaFleur credit when Aaron Rodgers was with the Packers just because it was like, oh yeah, of course they're going to be good. What has Matt LaFleur done? He has Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback. And I think he has proven now that Aaron has been gone for a year uh, with what he's been able to get out of Jordan Love and the way he was able to have that Packers team running and improving throughout the entire season and into the playoffs, uh, I think it was really impressive and proved to a lot of people that he is a really talented coach. So I could see him um, winning this award uh, almost as uh, you probably should have won this before uh, and we're giving it to you now out of respect for what you've done. So I am taking Matt LaFleur, Matt LaFleur there. Um, offensive Rookie of the Year. I think it's probably going to be Caleb Williams because I think it's really easy to give it to a quarterback. But I, I do think if a, for, a receiver is going to win, Marvin Harrison Jr. has a real shot at it. Um, so just for funsies, I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. as my pick there because I don't want to be basic on everything and I'm not taking Caleb Williams. Um, defensive Rookie of the Year, I have... Uh, Layatu Latu, uh, I feel like I'm always saying his name wrong because the first and last name are so similar, but, um, you know, I think a lot of people were really high on him going into the draft. Um, and just in terms of, I think, you know, the numbers that he's going to be able to put up, I think it's, there's potential there for him compared to some of the other highly taken defensive players in the draft. Like, I usually don't think, you know, corners and secondaries. I guess sometimes a corner is getting it, but um, I feel like in general, it's just, it's not going in that, that, that direction. It's usually a, a defensive lineman, a, you know, a pass rusher in many years. So um, that's who I'm going with in this instance. But I guess I think Sauce did win, so it could be a corner as well. Um, okay, Super Bowl predictions then. I think this is where I'm going to shock people just based on my division predictions. I was mentioning it when I was going over the NFC North um, because I am taking the Chiefs versus the Lions for the Super Bowl. So I didn't have the Lions winning the division, but I do think they're still going to be a playoff team and I have them going to the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. I think now that they got that that off their back last year with like being a team that hadn't been in the playoffs and they were able to get as far as they did. I think it takes some of the pressure off the franchise and the players um, to just like do this for the city. Obviously the city is still going to be super passionate and the fans are going to really care, but I do think it takes a, just a layer of that off um, that can be really intimidating. So I, um, I have the the Lions uh, instead of the 49ers who have the highest odds. It was interesting actually on ESPN Bet, I was looking at the different odds. The 49ers and the Eagles both have better odds than the Lions. On FanDuel, um, the Lions had better, slightly better odds than the Eagles. So I think it, it's a little back and forth on the, each of those. The 49ers are the clear favorite from the NFC. Chiefs are the clear favorite from the AFC, but um, it it's um i think a lot of people are going back and forth on on the sports books on the eagles and the lions um i think the lions are far more reliable than the eagles to, to bet on at this point in time for just making that push into the postseason just because of what we saw from the eagles last year so a little surprised to see that but i guess you never know um okay so that is actually all i have for you guys today Thank you so much for listening. Um, you know, we're going to start getting into full swing here with football season, which will be very, very exciting. Um, and there should be more to talk about as we have the preseason game against the Vikings. And then we have the last preseason game, which is the 10 p.m. Eastern time preseason game against the Seahawks. That one is going to physically hurt me. Um, and then we'll be getting right into the regular season. So exciting things to come. Um, we'll check back in a couple months too and see how I did on all of my predictions. That's always fun to see. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I, if you could leave me a review or rating, uh, leave a comment on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, all of that. Very much appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, go Browns.